Welcome back to Los Angeles, California. Today we are at Inglewood Park Cemetery, which is a very, very massive cemetery just a couple miles away from LAX Airport. But today we're here to visit the final resting places of two men that were closely linked to the O.J. Simpson trial. Let's go. Now there's a couple events in my lifetime, and probably yours too, when you can remember exactly where you were on a given day when something historical happened. Now for me, that was probably the O.J. Simpson case. All of us remember the moments of O.J. driving the Ford Bronco down the 405. That was probably the biggest media event that I can think of in my lifetime at least. Now O.J. Simpson famously had the dream team of lawyers. And that consisted of a couple different people, one of them who was a friend of O.J. Simpson dating back to the 1960s, and that man was Robert Kardashian. Now for a little background, Robert Kardashian and O.J. Simpson first met around 1967. Both of them were at USC. They became close friends. Now O.J. Simpson was the best man at Kardashian's wedding in 1978, and following the murder of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman, O.J. Simpson actually stayed in Kardashian's house to avoid the media, and Robert Kardashian was the man that was seen carrying O.J. Simpson's garment bag the day that O.J. flew back from Chicago. Now, prosecutors speculated that the bag may have contained O.J.'s bloody clothes or the murder weapon. Um, when Simpson failed to turn himself in on June 17th of 1994, Kardashian was the one that read the letter by Simpson to the assembled media. Now, the letter was interpreted by many as possibly being a suicide note, and it sparked all the th things that happened after the fact. Now, despite Robert Kardashian being a longtime friend of OJ's, he did say in a 1996 interview with Barbara Walters that he started to question whether or not OJ was guilty or not. But you may also recognize his name now from the famous Kardashian family, so we can kind of thank him for, for that, uh, you know, based on how you feel about the Kardashians. Now, Robert Kardashian was diagnosed with cancer in July of 2003, and he passed away only two months later on September 30th of 2003 at his home in Encino, California. Now, an interesting side note, too, is that Robert Kardashian also dated Priscilla Presley in the mid-70s. And just to the right of him would be Helen and Arthur Kardashian, who would have been Robert Kardashian's parents. Helen passed away in 2008, Arthur in 2012. Now you never know what you're going to find in a cemetery, but this is a little bit creepy. Now the second person that was included in this trial is part of the Dream Team, and actually he was the major part of the Dream Team. When you think of the O.J. Simpson defense, usually the person that you're probably going to think of was Johnny Cochran. Now Johnny Cochran was a very high profile lawyer. And he, for a little bit of background on him, he was born in 1937 in Shreveport, Louisiana. He got a law degree from Loyola Law School in 1962. Now, it's said that he was inspired by Thurgood Marshall and the legal victory that Marshall won in Brown versus the Board of Education. Now, this is just a beautiful area out here. But for a little bit more... Um, Johnny Cochran passed the California Bar Exam in 1963, then he took a position in L.A. as Deputy City Attorney in the Criminal Division. In 1964, Johnny Cochran prosecuted one of his first celebrity cases, and it was Lenny Bruce, the famous comedian. Um, he'd recently been arrested on obscenity charges, and uh, Johnny Cochran represented him. Now, two years after that, Cochran entered private practice, and not long after that, he opened up his own firm, which was Cochran, Atkins, and Evans in Los Angeles. Now, after starting up his own practice, um, his first notable case, Johnny Cochran represented a widow who sued several police officers who shot and killed her husband. The guy's name was Leonard Deadweiler, 
And Johnny Cochran lost the case, but it became a turning point for him because he decided that he was going to start pursuing civil rights cases. He started representing people who were victims of police brutality and other, a lot of other criminal cases. Now, before the O.J. Simpson case, Cochran had achieved a reputation as kind of a go-to lawyer for the rich, as well as a successful advocate for minorities and police brutality and civil rights cases. Now, pretty much all of us know him from the O.J. Simpson trial. He famously got O.J. Simpson off the hook on the murder trial of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. He famously said the, uh, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And O.J. Simpson walked away from that, uh, from that court case. It was, you know, there's, regardless of how you feel about O.J. Simpson and what ended up happening, there's going to be people that argue with you. There's going to be people that still think that he's innocent and an overwhelming majority uh, believe that he was guilty. But this is Johnny Cochran's parents right here. Johnny Cochran Sr. He was a an insurance salesman, I believe. But one of the early influences in young Johnny's life. And his mother, Hattie. She passed away in 1991. Now, Johnny Cochran was probably one of the best lawyers, if not the best lawyer of his lifetime. Now, this is where he's laid to rest right here. But when you think of legal powerhouses, usually you think of Johnny Cochran. He got a lot of people off of a lot of cases, and he also brought a lot of attention to um, some social issues that probably did need a lot of attention at the time. He defended many others like Michael Jackson. He defended P. Diddy. Um, a guy named Stanley uh, Tookie Williams, who was a L.A. gang member, he got him off uh, on a robbery trial. Now, in December of 2003, Johnny Cochran was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and in April of 2004, he underwent surgery, which led him to stay away from the media. And shortly after that, he told the New York Post that he was feeling well and was in good health. He ended up passing away on March 29th of 2005 from the brain tumor at his home in Los Angeles. There was a public viewing, and then there was a funeral held at Second Baptist Church in Los Angeles, and a memorial service was held at West Angeles Cathedral in Los Angeles. Now, his remains uh, were put in here at Inglewood Park Cemetery, but these were two members of the famous O.J. Simpson Dream Team. But thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.